martial arts gives you immediate feedback. It causes you to consistently be in a peak physiology. It causes you to focus. It gives you the very skills you need in life, and it gives you feedback when you're not doing it, if you're sparring at least, and if you've got a good sense of it. This is the truth about the martial arts business. Episode 3. I'm your host, John Graydon. In part 3 of my interview with Tony Robbins, he describes how someone can use martial arts to awaken the giant within. That's followed by this week's Teach Like a Pro tip. Remember, please subscribe, review, and share this podcast. Let me know what you think by clicking the Ask Mr. Graydon Anything button below in the show notes. I also invite you to visit johngraydon.com for my personal coaching and training programs and martialartsteachers.com if you're a martial arts school owner, instructor, or plan to be one. Thanks for listening. This show is for you. When I started to explore your material, I was already a fifth degree black belt. I've been training for years, been on international teams. I'd enjoyed some success in the arts. And I realized a lot of what you referred to state management through physiology, focus, pain pleasure association were things that we were already doing in the martial arts, so I had experienced. But the name of your book is Awaken the Giant Within. How can someone use martial arts to awaken the giant within? Well, um, the way we feel is number one controlled by the way we move. That's the bottom line. In fact, I tell people emotion is created by motion. So a lot of people, if I bring people to seminars all the time, and I have them write down all the emotions that they feel mm-hmm. in an average week. And so just write down the ones you have consistently, not once in a while, but yeah. consistently. Invariably, no matter where I go in the country and do this, I did it again this weekend, a dozen is yeah. the average. Yeah. Now, there are 3,800 plus words to describe emotions that we have. And so, and there's some we don't have words to describe. But we're we do 12, we keep her in the yeah. same 12, same person. They get frustrated all the time. They get angry or they get hurt or they feel like mm-hmm. a victim or they feel overwhelmed all the time. They run those same dozen emotions, positive and negative, again and again and again and again. And part of it is because they move their body the same way all the mm-hmm. time. Because the way we move instantly changes the way we feel. So what happens is many, many times you'll see a couple and they've been married for 30 years and they look like each other. <laughs> you know, and people forget about it, but it's true. And they do it because when people are talking to each other, if they're in rapport, if I'm mm-hmm. telling a story and, and I'm kind of animated and you look at me like this all the time, pretty soon we're not in rapport. Yeah. If we're in a relationship, you kind of nod and make the same dumb yeah. look back at me. You know, it makes rapport happen. <laughs> well, if you do this over and over again for 30 years, you literally sculpt your face. Yeah, interesting. So what's interesting though is most people don't use the muscles in their face. Yeah. They got like 80 muscles. Mm-hmm. This for them is excitement. <laughs> this is worried. This is depressed. <laughs> and you go, people tell me all the time, well, I'm really, I'm really excited. When are you going to tell your face about it? You know what I mean? We have to use more of it. And in martial arts, there are physiologies you're going into that you're yeah. not going to anywhere. I mean, boom, that kind of instantaneous mm-hmm. movement, that going from zero to 60 in five seconds, that wham, explosion. That, is, that explosion, that force is what people need to be able to break through a fear in their mm-hmm. normal way. That's what they need to move their business to the next level. Somebody comes at you in business or something happens and all of a sudden you feel surrounded in business, you have to be able to do it with the same kind of art and balance and centeredness there as you do in the martial arts. So I think the martial arts provide us with a physical metaphor mm-hmm. that causes us to consistently put ourselves in peak mental states. And whatever mental states you're in, an emotional state, will govern all your behaviors. If you're in a frustrated and angry state, you're going to behave differently than if you're feeling loving and warm. We've all had times where we like couldn't think of something like our address or our yeah. phone number or how to spell the word yeah. the. Well, how come you couldn't think of it? You know how to spell the. Because yeah. you're in what I call a stupid state. You know? <laughs> and martial arts tends to cause you not to be in so many stupid yeah, states. It doesn't, it doesn't mean you're a stupid person. No, just means you're in a stupid state. Yeah. Yeah. But, and we've all, as martial artists, done some stupid things, even oh. though we knew better. You know? and, and someone's got a few, you know, <laughs> dam- a little damage to the body because of it, because we got a little feedback yeah. during those times. But martial arts gives you immediate feedback. It causes you to consistently be in a peak physiology. It causes you to focus. It gives you the very skills you need in life. And it gives you feedback when you're not doing it, if you're sparring at least, and if you've got a good sense of it. We talk a lot about uh, strategies and, and having a blueprint for success. And, of course, your book, Awaken the Giant Within, would provide that. Tell us a little bit about this book. Well, really what it's about is giving you the finest strategies on five what I call master lessons. Because I think most people fail in life because they major in minor things. Bingo. You know. They, they're not focusing on the things that make the biggest difference. And I think the thing that really controls your life is, number one, how do you live your life emotionally? So many people do not know how to change from being angry to being loving or to go from being overwhelmed to being in control mm-hmm. in an instant. They know how to do it through time, but in an instant, without drugs, without alcohol, without food, without going hitting a punching bag, you know? And 
Second major, so how do you do that? So mm-hmm. show. Second, how do you really get yourself in the absolute peak physiology so that you can have the kind of endurance and intensity that you want, not only in martial arts, but in life? Thirdly, how do you really master your relationships? I know a lot of great martial artists who are very, very intense people. They're great when on the mat to compete against, but I sure as heck wouldn't want to be their friends because off the mat they're still competing. You know, they haven't mm-hmm. learned to change the metaphor. Mm-hmm. Life is not a competition. You know, and then fourth, looking at how do you really master your financial world? Because, you know, oftentimes when we focus on one area, like, you know, the physiology yeah. or commit, we leave out some other areas mm-hmm. and we're a little stressed out in those areas. And so, really, how do we do well without making it your whole dominant focus mm-hmm. financially for a lifetime? And then lastly, how do you really master your time? Because any martial artist who's, who's not in the business, in your, mm-hmm. your case, you've been smart enough to get yourself what you love yeah. and do it full time. They got to try and juggle their normal life, their family life, their martial arts life all together. And create the balance. Well, how do you do that and create the balance? Yeah. And that's really what the book shows. Very important. You talk about leverage, giving yes. leverage and, and putting yourself in a position where you're leveraged. And I'm going to do that with you. Tell us what is in Tony Robbins' goal book for five years. You've accomplished so much. Yeah. I, I'm, what is next for you? Well, it's interesting. I used to have very specific goals, and I ran through my 10-year goals in about a year and a half to two years. <laughs> and uh, I, I say that with tongue-in-cheek, but I also say it honestly. Um, and so what I used to be, I was very outcome-oriented, even as a martial artist. It was just like, mm-hmm. I'm going to achieve this goal at this time. Well, any black belt knows that black belt doesn't mean anything as far as I'm concerned. Start. What means it is it's the beginning. Mm-hmm. All it is is a license to start to really learn. Yeah. You know. And so um, I'm no longer like that anymore. I no longer just have the goal. I have goals. Yeah. For example, this year I have a foundation and I wanted to feed 2,000 people. Well, we were going to feed 10,000 which I'm so excited, in 100 cities, Amazing. Uh, volunteers all over the nation. I donated 10% of, the, of my book, $100,000, to get the thing going, and now it's just going crazy. Next year, I want to do 100000 mm-hmm. But it's kind of like you have these goals, and they're like these mountains in the distance. As you get closer to the mountain, you know, the thing that's way in the distance, you see more. Yeah. You know you have more options. But what most people do, they go, I was going for that mountain, so, man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get like that mountain. Well, what I do is I get out there now, and I go, all right, that's really cool. I see the mountain, and what's this? Oh, look at this. You know what? This is what I really want today, yeah. and then I'll, I'm more than happy to go there. I don't have to, like, run down one plan. I think mm-hmm. flexibility, as it is in martial arts, uh-huh. is power. And we need to take that flexibility into our personal lives as well. So I have goals for my foundation. Um, if you asked me five years ago, what would I be doing five years from now? I'd say I'd be running for Congress or the Senate um, because I want to make the biggest difference I can. You ask me today, mm-hmm. I'm a member of the Senatorial Trust. I get to see these guys every day and what it takes. <laughs> I now begin, as, as I'm closer to the mountain, I'm going, I don't know. I don't know if this is the best way to contribute. Maybe well, I'm better on the outside influencing than on the inside trying mm-hmm. to do it. I may change my mind. For a while. But uh, we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. Well, I, like I didn't give you a very direct answer. That's I, okay. You didn't I'm telling you an honest place of where yeah. I'm at. I'm real committed to uh, my vision and less committed to my goals. Interesting. Interesting. I'm sure they're congruent. A final point I want to make is I want to thank you for the influence you've had on me and through me on our students, which uh, right. number in the hundreds and soon to be the thousands. That's great. And it's, it's, it's been a, a, a tremendous boost in, in my confidence as an instructor and how I've been able to relate and help these students. Because as a martial arts instructor, a lot of the critical things don't happen on the deck. That's they right. happen later in the office when the little child comes in and says, I got beat up today at school. That's right. My grades are bad. Can you help my son? His confidence is so bad. And you've helped really provide some tools for me to deal with that. And I look forward to getting my black belt in okay. NAC. You got it. Thank you, sir. I thank you for having me on. Okay. God bless. I do have more interviews with Tony Robbins. Please let me know if you'd like to hear them. And I apologize for my white belt interview skills, my ineptitude. This was done some time ago when I had a TV show here in the Tampa Bay area, and I no one ever taught me how to do interviews, so I was winging it, and I think that's pretty apparent. Either way, if you'd like to hear more interviews with Tony Robbins, let me know. Right now, it's time for our Teach Like a Pro Tip of the Week. These lessons are straight from the Mata Certification course at matacertification.com. This week, Module 1, Lesson 8, Avoid Using Tags. When you ask a child or teen about something that requires a descriptive response, it's not unusual for them to finish with and stuff. For instance, today we played soccer and PE and and stuff. The child doesn't quite know where to end the description, so he clumps the finish together with and stuff. That is a tag. For instructors, the tag is typically an unnecessary question at the end of a statement. For instance, When you throw the right cross, always come back with a left hook or ridge hand, okay? Okay is the tag. There's no need to ask if it's okay. You make the statement, you ask the student to do it, you don't ask for their permission. 
That is a tag that weakens your presentation. I have fired instructors who could not stop using OK as a tag when they were teaching. Tags signal a lack of confidence in what you just said. You're asking permission to continue. You're asking if what you said is valid. Make your statement and carry on without the tag. You can certainly ask for questions, but be careful with your tags. Some of the more common examples to avoid would include, got me? Okay? Makes sense? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm talking about? You get what I'm saying. Tags can also precede the statement. Many instructors tag what they say at the front of the statement and at the end of the statement. For instance, okay, we're going to learn how to jab, okay? This weakens your delivery because the instructor is asking if it's okay to teach and then asking again if what he taught is okay. That is the definition of weak teaching. Show number three is in the can. Thanks so much for listening. Please share with your friends. Give us some great reviews. Provide me some feedback by clicking the Ask Mr. Graydon anything button below or just shoot me an email at john at johngraydon.com. See you next week. Thanks.